Good morning. Hi, my name is Emily Underwood. I'm the Community Initiative Specialist at the Missouri Historical Society. Thank you so much for joining us today for this STL History Live presentation, Finding Your St. Louis Ancestors Online with Dennis Northcott. The Missouri Historical Society hosts about three to four of these presentations every week. So be sure to check out the full STL History Live lineup. You can find that on our History Museum Facebook page under our list of events, and you can find it there as well. The next program coming up is uh, this Friday, May 1st at 2 o'clock p.m. It's the 1904 World's Fair Looking Back at Opening Day with Sharon Smith, who's one of our curators. So before we get started, I do want to take a moment to express some gratitude. Um, first, I want to say a big thank you to our members. Um, we sincerely appreciate you and all of your support that helps keep our programs like this series um, going. And if you're not a member, but you'd like to learn more about our membership program, if you click down below um, in the chat, you can see I've posted a URL for more information about that. And you can copy and paste that into your browser. Um, I also want to recognize the support of the Zoo Museum Tax District um, with a big thank you to everyone in the St. Louis region. So first day, about 25 minutes, we'll have a Q&A. You can submit your questions through Q&A at the screen. And um, before I get through as many of those Good morning. Thank you all for joining me this morning. Um, I've got a lot to cover this morning, so I'm going to jump right in. First of all, I'd like to talk to you about our mega genealogy databases, as I deem them. And these are some of the ones I use most routinely. So first off, Ancestry.com. Now, most often in recent times, when you hear about Ancestry.com, the talk is about um, DNA testing. But keep in mind, Ancestry also has a mega database to uh, index and digitize valuable genealogical records, things like military records, immigration records, census records, and on and on. Now, Ancestry.com is a subscription database, so you can pay for a subscription to use at home. But keep in mind, um, the Missouri Historical Society Library, the St. Louis Public Library, and the St. Louis County Library all have subscriptions to Ancestry.com. So if you visit any of our libraries in person after we reopen to the public, you can use Ancestry, you can use Ancestry for free. However, during the pandemic, the St. Louis Public Library and the St. Louis County Library are offering free remote access to Ancestry.com to their card holders. So if you have a St. Louis City, a St. Louis Public Library card or a St. Louis County Library card, you can log on to Ancestry from home temporarily and use this fantastic site at home. So next off, findagrave.com is a free website. Um, it's kind of a huge crowdsourcing effort to try to upload burial information from cemeteries around the world. Um, it's a very easy to use site and I found quite a few of my own ancestors in there. Bear in mind, it's not uh, burial information on every single grave and every single cemetery in the whole world, but it is an enormous database. And next, newspapers.com, another subscription service. 
it's kind of become in recent years the um, number one resource for digitized newspapers. And in fact, there's several long runs of St. Louis historic newspapers that are digitized in newspapers.com. Now, the Missouri Historical Society Library has a subscription to the Missouri collection of newspapers.com. Um, that is the Missouri newspapers they've digitized up to this point. So when we reopen to the public, if you come visit us, you can use our newspapers.com subscription. Now, the St. Louis County Library has a subscription to the World Collection, meaning all the newspapers from around the world that new newspapers.com is digitized up to this point. And the County Library offers remote at-home access to newspapers.com. So if you have, if you're a County Library card holder, you can visit the County Library website and access newspapers.com from home. And lastly, familysearch.org is the Mormons website. And much like ancestry.com, it's a huge index to our database rather to indexed and digitized genealogical records. And I'm gonna point out a couple quick search tips when using familysearch.org. So this is the family search homepage. Under the search tab, if you click under the records from the drop-down list, you'll come to this search historical records page where you can key in the names of any of your ancestors, put the first name in the first name column, the last name in the last name field. And then in the bottom portion of the screen, you have various options to um, refine your search. But I wanted to point out those small circles that I have, or those small boxes I have circled in red. I have keyed in on this screenshot, my surname Northcott. Now, if I would do a search in Family Search without checking that small box circled in red, it will pull up all the records, not only to the surname Northcott, but similar sounding surnames like Northcutt and Northcote. However, if you check that small box, then it tells the database to only retrieve those records that match the exact spelling that you've keyed in. So I tend to like to check the boxes initially, and then if I don't get the results I'm hoping for, I uncheck the box to broaden out my search. Now, returning to the Family Search homepage, there's one other thing I wanted to point out, also under the Search tab. If you click the Catalog option, you'll come to the Family Search Catalog. Now, in recent years, actually going back generations, Family Search has microfilmed valuable genealogical records from around the world. And in the last handful of years, they've been digitizing these records and making them available on Family Search. However, many of these recently digitized collections of records are not yet name indexed. So if you search for names in that search historical records page I showed you a moment ago, it's not accessing all of the records they digitized. But what you can do is go to the Family Search catalog that you see here, do a place name search for St. Louis as an example. And here's just a small portion of the results that come up. Um, it's categorized alphabetically of the various collections of genealogical records that Family Search has relating to St. Louis. So you see cemetery listings and census records and church records. And just as an example, down there at the bottom of the screen, I highlighted that entry for records of baptisms and confirmations at St. Rita's Academy. And if you click on that link, you'll come to this page and you see in the far right hand column where I've circled in red under the format heading, if you see a camera icon in that column, that indicates that the records are digitized. And if you click on that camera icon link, you can view those records. Um, sometimes you'll see an icon for a microfilm reel, which, index, which indicates that the records are only currently available on microfilm. But if you click on that camera icon, you'll be able to view these digitized confirmation and baptism records, and they'll be in some sort of sensible order, most likely chronologically, but there might be an index at the beginning of them to help you locate the record you're looking for. So this is a sample page of the US Census. Um, this one's from 1940. So the census is taken every 10 years, and it kind of is the framework for genealogical research. So I would encourage you to try to find all your ancestors in the census decade by decade. And the census is indexed and digitized both on ancestry.com and on familysearch.org. Now, one thing you need to know about though is the most recent census that's available to the public is the 1940 census. 
there's a 72 year privacy rule before the federal government releases those records. So in two years, in 2022, we'll get our first glimpse at the 1950 census. One other thing to note is the 1890 census was lost in a fire that causes no end of heartache to genealogists. So in a moment, I'm gonna show you a blow, blown up or zoomed in version of this page you see here. And first I'll show you the left-hand side of the page and then the right-hand side. So on the left-hand margin, you see the um, census taker is recording households on Mardell Avenue here in St. Louis. And I just wanna point out one of these records as an example. If you go to line 49, you see the household of Harry P. Jacoby, head of the household and his wife, Minnie. Now, if you look just to the left of Jacoby, you see that letter O, that indicates that he owned his home rather than rented. And the $7,000 um, is the value of his home at that time in 1940. But continuing to the right in these records, um, you see Harry Jacoby was age 59. He was born in Missouri. His wife, Minnie, was age 56 and also born in Missouri. Now, if we scroll over to the right-hand side of the screen, you see in the far right margin, um, record 49, and right in the center of the page, you learn that Harry Jacoby was a rate clerk for a railroad. Now I wanna move on to resources at the Missouri Historical Society. This is a view of our homepage, mohistory.org, and we have several catalogs and databases and indexes that are valuable for genealogical research. And I'm just gonna give you some tips about how to navigate around our site. So in the upper left-hand corner, if you click that menu option, you'll get this drop-down list. If you click subscribe, that will take you to a page which will give you the option to subscribe to a monthly e-newsletter I send out called Genealogy and House History News. So every month, I and my volunteers are indexing new genealogically valuable sources from our collection, and we're uploading that data into our online genealogy and local history index. So in this monthly e-newsletter, I'll let you know what new sources we've indexed each month, and I'll let you know about um, valuable genealogical databases and indexes at other repositories. So it's a good um, source to keep up to date with um, new things coming out in St. Louis genealogical research. But now I wanna click that other option I've got circled in red, research. So if you click on research, you'll come to our research page. And from our research page, click the bottom left-hand corner circled in red, research online. And that will take you to our online research page. And this page is essentially the gateway to the various catalogs, guides, and databases that describe our collections. And I'm just gonna walk you through a few of these. So first off, if you click on the online collection search option, that will take you to our online collection search database, which catalogs our documents, our photos and prints, and our artifacts. And you'll see in red, I've circled that lowercase i, please be sure you click on that. That will take you to a search tips page, which is really important. Frequently when I'm helping researchers in person at our library and research center, I'll see how they search in this online collection search and I'll know instantaneously um, that they're not searching in the most effective way. So please make sure you take a look at the search tips. Now as a search example, I've keyed in the surname Giarilla and you see at the bottom of the page, it pulled up a digitized um, family wedding photo from the 1930s of the Giarilla family. So imagine if that was your grandparents, an example, for an example, what an exciting find that would be. Now, in most cases with our online collection search, your searches aren't going to result in digital images of items such as this photograph. In most cases, the results are only gonna show a catalog record describing an item at our library and research center. And then you'll need to come visit us in person when we reopen to view the item. But in some cases like this one, you'll see the digitized item. Now, returning to our online research page, now I'm gonna click on the link for the online library catalog which you see here. It's a pretty simple um, interface. You can do a keyword search, or if you know of a particular book that you're hoping our library might hold, um, you can do a search by author and title. Now, bear in mind, this online library catalog is an entirely distinct catalog from the online collection search I showed you a moment ago. And here in this box in yellow, I've given you just a few examples of tips for how to search the library catalog. 
So you may want to search for your surnames as an example. Our library holds hundreds of published genealogies, um, some of which date back to the 19th century. So if you're lucky, you might discover that somebody's already done a lot of research for you and published that research. Also search by the names of churches and schools your ancestors may have belonged to. Just as an example, we have a large collection of St. Louis area high school and college yearbooks. We're particularly strong on yearbooks for the St. Louis public schools, schools like Central and McKinley and Cleveland, and many of these date back to the first decade of the 20th century. And lastly, search for the names of companies your ancestor might have worked for. You might find that we have a company employee magazine for that company. And I'll show you some examples of those employee magazines in just a moment. And also search for the names of organizations, clubs, and societies and such that an ancestor might have belonged to. Because you may find we might have a roster of that organization or an annual report or, or a history, just as a few examples. Now, one last thing I wanted to point out, returning to our online research page, if you click Genealogy and Family History, you'll come to our Genealogy and Family History page. And this is probably the best page on our website to start your research. And I wanna point out two things on this page. In the bottom right corner, if you click on the Genealogy Resources link, you'll come to a page that I've compiled that contains brief descriptions and links to what I regard as all the great databases at other repositories for researching your St. Louis ancestors. For example, on the Genealogy Resources page, there's a link to the wonderful Missouri State Archives death certificates database, which contains indexed and digitized death certificates for the entire state of Missouri from 1910 to 1969. So make sure you read through the genealogy resources page. Now I wanna to talk to you about the link right in the center at the bottom, our genealogy and local history index. If you click on that, you'll come to the search page for our genealogy and local history index. And this index dates back about 10 years or so ago when I and my volunteers began indexing anything we can get our hands on in our collections that has valuable genealogical information about St. our St. Louis ancestors. So we've indexed things like military records, obituary scrapbooks, company employee magazines, um, school yearbooks, who's who publications, rosters of organizations, and on and on. Now you have a few main search options. You can search by personal name, which we'll talk more about in just a moment, or you can search by business corporate name or street address. So if, for example, your ancestor worked for a business in St. Louis and you wanna learn more about that business, you can key in that business name into the business corporate name search. Um, regarding the street address search, that's primarily designed for people who are researching the history of their home. So if you have a St. Louis city or county home that you're interested, particularly if it's an older home, you can key in your street address to see if we've indexed anything about the history of that home or its former residence. And while I'm on the topic of house history, I'll just do a brief aside to point out the house history link down in the bottom right corner of this page. If you click that link, it'll take you to our house history resources page, which provides descriptions and links to valuable sources to learning about your house history page. Now, whether you search the, click the personal name option, the business option, or the street address search, make sure on the ensuing page that you read the important search tips. So if you click on the personal name search option, you'll come to the following page. And if you put your cursor over the search tips right in the middle of the screen, it'll pull up that box you see on the right. Just make sure you read those quick tips to make sure you're searching this index most effectively. So you see on the left-hand side, I keyed in the first name box, Harry, and the last name box, Jacoby, to see if anything might turn up about that same Harry Jacoby that was mentioned on that 1940 census page I showed you earlier. So when I clicked search, I came up with this record that indicates that Harry Philip Jacoby's name appears in the March 1955 issue of the Missouri Pacific Lines Magazine, which was the employee magazine in the Missouri Pacific Railroad. And if you find this reference and you think it looks interesting and you'd like to see what it is, you have two options. You can click that red request photocopy button, which will put this record in a shopping cart type feature from which you can submit electronically an order to our library to send you a photocopy of this page. 
bear in mind if you find anything, um, we're not going to be able to fill those orders till our library and research center reopens. Now, your other option, if you find this record and it interests you, is to visit our library and research center in person. We can then bring the magazine out to you and you can get a copy on site for just a quarter. Whereas if you click the request photocopy button, there's a fee um, associated with us sending you that copy. And it's much cheaper if you come visit us in person. You can then get a copy for a quarter or you can use your camera on your phone and take a picture for free. And just keep in mind, the Genealogy and Local History Index is just an index. You're not going to see the digitized material um, on our website. So this is a collage of photos of the covers of several St. Louis company employee magazines. And we've been aggressively indexing the names from these magazines into our Genealogy and Local History Index in recent years. So you see Famous Bar published the store chat. Anheuser-Busch published Budcaster, Neuter Boiler Works Company published The Boilermaker. And if by chance you have any of these old issues in your possession that you no longer want, um, please contact us because we're always trying to enhance our collection of these employee magazines, which are just jam-packed with valuable genealogical information on the employees. And now I'm going to show you some examples of what you can find in these magazines. So believe it or not, in 1963, Anheuser-Busch um, had an employee beauty contest. And here you see the March 1963 issue showing Miss Pat Radel, who was named Miss Budweiser. So if you would go to our genealogy and local history index and key in Pat Radel's name into the personal name search option, you'd find a reference that we have this picture of her. Now, on the left-hand side, this is the cover of a publication called Wheels. It was the magazine of the American Car and Foundry Company. This is the May 1945 issue, which has this interesting article about an employee at the St. Charles plant. Clifford Frost Jr. was born in St. Louis on January 29th, 1928, which makes him 17 years old now. None of that is remarkable, but on December 10th, 1941, at the age of 13 years, Clifford decided to broad, broaden his horizons by joining the Marines. Clifford has red hair and an honest face and armed with sufficient credentials proving that he was 17 years old, he was accepted and shipped to San Diego. At Camp Elliott, he was given seven weeks of boot, followed by two months of advanced training at Camp Pendleton. That finished, he was reassigned to Camp Elliott as an assistant to the platoon sergeant, and he began his work of drilling and instructing new recruits. Clifford had smooth sailing, liked his job, and everything was fine until a checkup of the National Service Insurance was made. It was then discovered that Marine Clifford Frost, hard-boiled assistant drill master, was but 16 years of age. On April 9, 1944, Clifford was given an honorable discharge, and that is how it came about that he is now an employee of the ACF in St. Charles. Clifford would rejoin, but is still only 17 at this time, and Clifford Sr. is not signing. So that's just an example of a fun article you can find in one of these employee magazines. Now these employee magazines, another common feature of them is they would love to publish photographs of employee children, such as this page from the United Railways Bulletin of December 1917, and all these kids are identified by name at the bottom of the page. These companies also like to um, sponsor sports teams, baseball and softball and bowling and such. So here you see a, a picture of the baseball team of Commonwealth Steel in the 19 teens. What a great find that would be if that was some ancestors of yours. Now these employee magazines also frequently had a section where they post humorous blurbs about things employees said or did. And the next couple of slides I'm gonna show you are from the Public Servicer, the employee magazine of the St. Louis Public Service Company, which operated the buses and streetcars in St. Louis. And these little blurbs are from a 1930 issue. Henry Dewing, full of Scotch tricks, put a set of, set of horseshoes in his little son's stocking and told him the pony got away. Now, if you think Henry Dewing was a bit mean-spirited, his colleague Herman Nyland had an even darker sense of humor. Using a joke heard over the radio to advantage, Herman Nyland went out on the back porch Christmas Eve and fired two or three shots in the air, he then went in the house and informed his youngsters that Santa Claus had committed suicide. It worked. So imagine finding such a blurb like that about an ancestor. 
Now, the Missouri Historical Society was founded back in 1866. And since that time, countless individuals have donated family papers to our archives. So what types of things do families tend to retain? Well, they tend to keep things like photo albums and family scrapbooks and uh, correspondence and diaries and marriage licenses and things like that. And they also tended to keep um, receipts of items they purchased. And in the old days, these receipts were often on beautifully illustrated letterheads, such as this 1903 receipt of the Jacob D. Strauss Saddlery Company. And thousands of these letterheads are indexed in our genealogy and local history index. By the way, the um, building in the upper left-hand corner still stands at 13th and Washington. Um, it's the Knickerbocker Lofts today. And you'll see back in 1903, there was a billboard of a horse on top of the building because the company there um, in the building sold saddles. But the billboard's long gone, but the building still stands down at 13th and Washington. And sometimes these letterheads can make for entertaining reading. This is a letterhead from the 1880s of Frank Bliss, a cockroach exterminator. And he used his surname for a little playful marketing. You see the um, roach on the left is looking for Bliss and the dead roach has found too much Bliss. So from the 1880s to the 1970s, the staff of the Missouri Historical Society Library used to read through the local newspapers and clip the obituaries and compile them into necrology scrapbooks. Our library has more than 30 of these necrology scrapbooks with thousands of obituaries. And in recent years, all these obituaries in these scrapbooks have been indexed into our genealogy and local history index. Now, this is a membership application for an organization called the St. Louis Grootley Verine from 1892. The Grootley Verine was an organization of Swiss immigrants to St. Louis. So if your ancestor came to St. Louis from Switzerland, he might have joined this local organization. And about 10 years ago, we got a large donation of records of the local Grootley Verine, including an application book. This is just showing one page. The application book has about 200 applications. But this one was for an applicant named Friedrich Bertke. He was a bartender born in 1863. He was born in the canton of Bern, but most importantly, it gives his exact place of birth in the town of Gerlofingen. Now, there are many genealogists who tried to determine the exact place of birth in Europe of their ancestors for years, if not decades. And this is just an example of one source that can provide that valuable information. Or here's a wonderful quirky source. This is the sheet. Uh, cover image of the music of a song called the Union Baseball Club March in 1867 and it includes portrait sketches of the nine players with their position and these names are indexed in our genealogy and local history index and I can assure you, you wouldn't find this item indexed or digitized on ancestry.com or family search. Lastly, or almost lastly, the Grand Army of the Republic was a Civil War Union Veterans Organization. So if your ancestor served on the Union side during the Civil War, he would have been eligible to join the GAR. And our archives has records of two of the St. Louis posts or chapters of the GAR, the Ransom Post and the Frank P. Blair Post. And here you see a biographical sketch form that was filled out by a member of the Ransom Post. It gives his name and occupation and address, his exact date of birth, his exact place of birth in England. The bottom half of this um, page asks questions about his military service. And this is actually only the top half of the form. The bottom half asks some questions about his family life, uh, the name of his wife, when he was married, the name of his children and such. So GAR records are a wonderful genealogical source as well. So many of you who have lived in St. Louis for a long time may recall the terrible fire in 1973 at the National Military Personnel Records Center up on page, which largely destroyed the federal 20th century service records. However, shortly after World War I, the state adjutant general's office wanted to compile a biography and service record of Missourians who served in World War I. So my institution, the Missouri Historical Society, was responsible for gathering these records for those who enlisted in St. Louis City and County. So we sent out these questionnaires to the veterans it was voluntary. They didn't have to fill these out, but about 10,000 veterans did and returned these questionnaires to us. And sometimes they also sent in a photograph of themselves 
um, in their military uniform. So the top half of the form uh, gives information about this veteran's uh, military service. And then the bottom half answers lots of great biographical questions. And two questions I wanna point out in particular that are fantastic is it asks father's name and father's first American ancestor, Colonel Robert Mann in Virginia, mother's first American ancestor, Patrick Comerford in New Orleans, so imagine somebody asking your ancestor in 1920 about their ancestors. So that's just a quick run through of some of the um, sources we've indexed in our genealogy and local history index. And now I'm gonna try to answer any questions you might have, but you've got my email there um, if I don't have time to get to your question today. So please, please feel free to um, contact me and send me an email and I'll try to help you out with that. So oh, let me see how I get to the Q&A here, just a moment. Well, I'm not sure, how do I get to that, Emily? I don't see it down at the bottom here. Well, I think I'll just skip ahead to the our final slide here and let Emily take over. Oh, there I see the Q&A, sorry about that. Let me click on that and see what we have. Hi, so one question we have, um, do you have prom magazine in your files? Yes, we do have prom magazine from 1947 to 1970. And in fact, we're in the very early stages of indexing prom magazine. So I would encourage you to send me an email and um, I'll take a look and see if we find a name that you might be looking for. So I have another question here. When comparing family search and ancestry, do they have unique strengths and weaknesses? Is one better than the other for certain records? Um, well, I don't know if I have a really good question or answer for that rather, but there are some duplications. For example, both have um, the federal census, but there's different sources. There is some duplication of resources on those two sites. Um, but I don't know, it depends on what you're particularly researching. So I would encourage you to do some searches in both. Another question I have, do you have any divorce, marriage, et cetera, records for St. Louis city or county, or do I need to get them for this, from the city or county offices? For the most part, the answer to that question is you need to contact the city and county appropriate office, depending on what record you're re um, looking for. Now, the Missouri Historical Society was begun as a private organization back in 1866. So we were never an official repository for any local government records, things like marriages and vital records. However, in some cases, back in the mid 20th century in particular, sometimes local government offices from St. Louis City and County contacted us and asked us if we wanted some of their old records that they no longer had use, to, use for. So we do have a variety of um, scattered records, mostly from the 19th century of some um, St. Louis city and county offices. Just for example, one thing that comes to mind is we have from the 1840s, um, hundreds of ferry licenses for St. Louis. So if you wanted to operate a ferry over the local rivers, you needed to get a ferry license and we have hundreds of those in one of our collections. Um, I have another question. When will the 1950 census records be released? Well, in 2022 will mark 72 years since that census was taken. So I believe those records will come out in 2022. So roughly two years from now. And in fact, back in 2002, when the 1930 census was released, I remember reading a story that there were a few libraries around the country that opened one minute after midnight um, of the census release date, because these genealogists were so eager um, to find their ancestors um, in the 1930 census for the first time. Um, I've got another question. Do your archives include pictures of small businesses? Um, not in any comprehensive sort of way, of course, um, but we could have a photo of a, of a business. And you would, you, would like to, you would want to check our online collection search which I showed you near the beginning of this presentation. Also keep in mind in digitized St. Louis newspapers, that's another good place um, where you might find images of St. Louis buildings. And you can also check the um, business search option 
of our genealogy and local history index. Because remember when I showed you that letterhead of the Strauss Salary Company, it contained an image, not a photo, but a sketch of the building in which that company um, was located. I see another question. My family is from Osage in Cole County in Jefferson City. Where can I go for information? So our collections at the Missouri Historical Society Library and Research Center focus predominantly on the St. Louis area. So our collections wouldn't be particularly strong on those two counties you mentioned. What you may want to do is contact the State Historical Society of Missouri. They have a very similar name to ours, but they're an entirely separate um, institution. And the State Historical Society's website is shsmo.org. So try the State Historical Society. Um, that would probably be your best option there. Let me see if there's some other questions that might be relatively quick for me to take a look at. What are the dates of the St. Louis City School Yearbooks collection? <clears throat> well, you would want to go to our library catalog and key in the name of the high school you're researching, and that'll pull up a record telling you which years we have yearbooks for that particular school. So it'll vary. Some, um, some schools we have pretty lengthy runs, pretty complete runs, and others, they're pretty scattered. Also, many of our school yearbooks from the St. Louis Public Schools prior to 1940, we've indexed those names into our genealogy and local history index. So in addition to checking our online library catalog, also check our, um, the genealogy and local history index. And I think I better wrap it up there so Emily can give some closing remarks, but I'll try if I can to um, answer your questions after the fact via email. And remember you have my email address available. Um, so just um, send me an email if you have any further questions. So thanks a lot for joining me today and I'll turn it over to Lindsay now. Hi there. Um, so Emily was having a little bit of sound issues at the beginning, and some of you might have missed what she shared. Dennis, thank you so much for sharing such a vast array of resources about genealogy and family history with us today. And thank you all for tuning in. Emily did mention, and there's some information on the screen here about our upcoming programs. There are two to three STL History Live programs each week. Our next program is Friday at 2 p.m. and our curator, Sharon Smith, will be talking about the opening day of the World's Fair in St. Louis, which would have been this week in 1904, April 30th. So we'll be looking at that the, the day after the anniversary itself. So please do join us then or for some upcoming programs in the next week. And of course, you can see all of our calendar of programming for STL History Live at mohistory.org or also on our Facebook page. Um, and if you would like to share today's presentation with anybody who wasn't able to see it, or if you'd like to check out any of our previous presentations, they are on our YouTube page. Our YouTube channel is updated at the beginning of each week with the previous week's recordings. So check those out there. Um, and lastly, we just wanted to say that your feedback is always just so important to us. It helps us make some decisions on how to serve you better. So we would really appreciate if you take a short survey today. A Kobo toolbox survey should have opened in one of your browser tabs. So keep an eye out when we end the session and just take a couple minutes to fill that out. We would be so grateful. Again, thank you to city and county residents um, for your tax dollars that help support us through the Zoom Museum Tax District, as well as members. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time.